I am James Swanick, and today we're celebrating Tommy Golick, 37, from Melbourne, Australia. He is a married, expected father. In fact, his first child is coming in about four weeks from now, which is very exciting. And uh, Tommy is a marketing manager of one of Australia's largest retailers. And as we're conducting this interview, he is now 94 days alcohol free, which he tells me is the longest that he's gone without drinking since he was 18. Tommy, how does that feel? Uh, no, it feel, feels great. It feels great. Something that um, for a long time <clears throat> didn't think was achievable. Yeah, because if you were drinking, if this is the longest you've gone without drinking since you were 18, what's that? Uh, 20, that's almost 20 years, right? 20 years, yeah. It's a did long you time. Like, did you feel like you weren't going to get to this stage where you have power over your drinking now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, and I kind of felt like it was, I kind of consoled myself that it's normal. Right? Everyone, everyone has a drink. It's, it's fine. Um, you know, you can probably, I could probably go two weeks without alcohol. And I thought that was a great achievement. Um, but 90 and like with the feeling now that <clears throat> I genuinely don't, don't need it. I ha didn't think I could feel that way. Yeah. And you were sharing before we, uh, we got on here that as a result of being alcohol free for just 90 days, you've got integrity more time more energy and a much better marriage will you just um elaborate on those things for us yes i think um the integrity piece comes from and one of my goals in joining was to to be seen as a gentleman or to view myself as a gentleman it's something i take a lot of pride in and got strong role models in that with you know my father and other uh, male figures in my life and I think I always had the gentlemanly characteristics, but one probably thing that was missing was um, that form of control over alcohol and being consistent in how I show up every day or to each occasion and, you know, going to a function and having a genuine conversation with someone and listening to what they've got to say uh, rather than just some drunken conversation that might, you know, feel fun at the time. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, I don't actually remember exactly what I said to that person. And, um, you know, for my, for my wife to be able to know that, oh, we're going to this party tonight, everyone's going to have a lovely time. And, you know, not even the thought of, oh, you know, am I going to have to drive Tommy home or, um, yeah, we're going to have to carry him in or, you know, whatever it gets to, you know, there's that re reliability. So that's another one. And then, uh, yeah, moving, I guess, onto the marriage thing, already had a re like really solid marriage and this just makes it stronger because like i said um i've got that trust in myself my wife knows what she's going to get out of me and the time and energy i guess um like the weekends or any any day um you know you wake up and the world well, the world's your oyster um and i've shared with um the the project 90 group in the past that just say it's a Wednesday night and someone calls me asking if I'd like to do something on the, the Sunday, I would have said no because I didn't know how I was going to wake up on Sunday and if I'd want to go for breakfast or go for a hit of tennis or you know, anything. And now I can answer that question, yes or no, just based on if I want to do it. And, you know, just going for a walk on a Sunday morning, it's just – amazing uh, how much more time i've got and sometimes it's just sitting on the couch watching tv it's you know i can make that choice yeah how was alcohol first introduced into your life and your culture let's take us back to i guess what you saw or witnessed as a kid growing up and then maybe in your teens and then maybe in your early 20s just talk about you know i guess cultural conditioning and share a little bit about your upbringing if you would Yes, yeah, so I guess living uh, <clears throat> living in Australia, being born here, you see it everywhere. Uh, any birthday you go to from when you're a kid or um, as you get older, you know, it doesn't mean people are getting drunk. They might just be having a beer 
and that that's fine. It's all you know. If that's what people choose to do, I think they can enjoy that and be healthy. And um, from my own personal household, um, my dad would enjoy a beer with dinner, and that was it. I think in my thirty-seven years of life, I think I've seen my dad get drunk twice. So he definitely uh, wasn't a heavy drinker, or it wasn't part of our what what we expected from each other as a family. And then I guess as I got into my uh, teenage years, it was that kind of, you know, with the boys on a Saturday night before you go to a party, a little bit of binge drinking before you get there for, or you call it a bit of Dutch Dutch courage, you know, um, you know, a bit more likely to be, a, or had that feeling that you're more confident having, having a chat to a girl or that you're more fun. And then as you get to 18 and start actually going to, you know, nightclubs, bars, restaurants, um, it really uh, became the norm. Like you didn't want to be the designated driver. Um, you know, you end up getting to a spot where you don't have a good time without alcohol. Um, and that obviously went on for whatever, 20, 20, 20 years. And I think, I think I was always a binge drinker, so weekends or a night out. And then probably the last few years I started introducing it during the week. So it could be a glass or two of red over dinner. And then I think the probably the year before I decided to do something about it by joining Project 90, um, there'd be at least one or two weeknights where I, pro- where I pushed it too far, you know, and you're waking up for work the next day yeah feeling like rubbish you're thirsty your brain is nowhere near where it uh, should be to deal with you know your normal uh work conditions which you've signed up for and you get paid for and i guess as a even as a leader of the team that i wasn't always present um or able to help help the team through problems because i just couldn't figure it out myself um i know you mentioned a lot of your uh, videos and chats it's that fogginess you know you can't sort through simple um, problem solving. And, yeah, so it just got to the point where I'd kind of lost control of it. You know, I'd tell myself, all right, no drinking this week. Two days later, you know, I, I compromised myself. Well, I'll just have two. And then by the next week, it's back to a few nights of two, a few nights of ten, and I just had enough. <laughs> I just had enough. I could. It like, it's like I had a control over me. I couldn't deal with it. I'd, you know, I'd resign myself to the fact if I was going to a party that I didn't know what was going to happen. I'd wake up tomorrow and I may have had six or seven and stopped it and just been a little bit kind of cheerful, or I may have had 15 or 20 and just been a mess. Mm. And how long did that last for? Like until what age, do you think? Uh, so... I think those last two years were when I got to that kind of point where I just give up. I'm like, I'm going to drink tonight and I don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah, probably the last two years, probably from 30, uh, 34, 35 through to uh, just after 37. So I turned 37 in October and I joined up on Project 90 in December. Mm. Was anyone giving you feedback that your drinking was an issue besides you noticing it yourself? Um, yeah, <clears throat> so definitely over the part that so the the year before I did something about it, um, my wife and I had spoken about it a few times. Um, not heated or anything, but you know, definitely making the point that um, seems to be unhealthy now and too too regular. Um, and probably if yeah, a few friends su- subtly, maybe not actually sitting down and going, I think you're drinking too much, but I think I can't actually think of what was said, but I was getting the message either way. And I think uh, it wasn't, they weren't pinpointing alcohol, but I remember mentioning to you on an early call that um, probably a few years ago, my mum mentioned, oh, you're so, you're really quiet these days. You used to be so kind of cheerful and playful and, you know, getting engaged in conversation and, it probably was the alcohol. Maybe 
she was saying that to me a day or two after I had a big night drinking and naturally that's what I did. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was tired. Um, and, yeah, probably had that that impact. And one of the consequences was that I think I struggled to, uh, what do you call it, struggled to um, socialise without alcohol, uh, become reliant on it and probably didn't do anything about it because I was scared of how I would socialise without it. Mm. So you said your mum gave you some feedback. Did your wife give you any feedback? Yeah, so that was um, a few, probably the, over the last year or so, just, you know, I think you need to cut cut back your drinking, you know. Um, you know, it's not, it's not really normal to be getting – you know, drunk on a weeknight. Um, and like I said, it wasn't heated or anything. I was, you know, she's quite ca- always like really caring and not um, confrontational, but mm. I could see it was getting towards her and uh, getting to her. And um, as encouraged by you throughout this um, 90 days, engaged a couple of times on how we thought things were tracking. And obviously when you when you do that, um, the conversation will can revert back to the past and how you used to be because I think to be able to compare where you are now, sometimes you need to reflect back to where you were and without realising, and I don't think um, uh, Lauren probably realised at the time, uh, my drinking probably was causing, well, not probably, was causing her a bit of anxiety. So um, she mentioned that, you know, she'd go to bed and I'd stay up having another drink or two and she wasn't able to sleep properly till I was in bed. Now, um, mm. you know, and that's probably just even just from caring, like, you know, what am I, you know, what's my husband doing to himself, you know, should be resting now, getting ready for the next day or, you know, whatever it is. So it's from, a, I guess, from a, it's from an angle of care and love. It's not, uh, like I said, anything nasty or anything like that. So what was the moment where you actually decided to do something about it? And, and just, to, just to kind of expand on that question, because a lot of people get to the point where they decide that they're going to do something about it and then they go ahead and they use willpower or they use motivation or they watch a YouTube video and most, of, most people have the mistaken belief that they can actually knock this on the head themselves, doing it themselves without some support and coaching and accountability. Um, some people can do it. Most, in my experience, cannot. So so two questions. What was the moment where you decided to do something and then did you succeed or did you succeed for a while and then fail? <clears throat> and what was the point where you decided to just kind of, all right, I'm going to do this Project 90 thing that this fellow Australian fella seems to be talking about? Yeah, so uh, it was... The six months before I did join, I, uh, like I said, I would have, I decided a few times after the weekend that I'd had enough and willpower got me through four or five days, maybe a week. And I'd go straight back down. And then it got to kind of towards the end of spring and every weekend I'm waking up with regret, like, shit, I really didn't want to drink that much. Uh, I feel useless now. Um, I've lost control of it, and oh, one one thing I I saw, I think it was a, on a, a current affairs or one of those uh, programs here in Australia, and there was a hypnotist who you know cured people of drinking and smoking and all that kind of stuff. And then so I did actually um, send them an email, and uh, they didn't actually respond to what I had asked for. They ref- referred me to uh, some online quit smoking course and I said all right well you haven't actually answered my question so continued to drink for the next few weekends and then um again was get I was totally over it I was totally over it I was just doing it out of habit and didn't like I said I didn't know how to socialize without it and on one of my morning walks uh I just was searching podcasts about alcohol and I found one or two and I listened and I go okay they're not too bad but it's not really anything I hadn't heard before and then eventually got onto yours and I listened to your first episode and I'm like, okay, because, you know, um, <clears throat> I guess the big thing that you 
the program's about is not relying on willpower, um, having and having fun. And I, when listening to the podcast, I'm like, oh, I've got no idea how you're going to do this for me. But <laughs> I'm like, I'll I'll give it a go. And I think I'd probably stalk the the website a few times, and then eventually I put in um, scheduled to call with um, one of the enrollment coaches and then the call was scheduled for mon- a Monday and, again, I'd had a really heavy Sunday drinking, so it actually came at the perfect time because I felt like crap again. Um, and, like I said, I'd been over it. I'd been over it for a while. It was enough. I just didn't know how to stop it. And, yeah, well, that was, what, 94 days ago. And, yeah, the program just worked for me. It was great. Uh, how did you get through the first couple of weeks? Because a lot of people say the first couple of weeks can can feel challenging. Everyone has a different experience. Some people are just like, oh, this is easy. I've got it. Other people are like, oh, man, this is challenging. What were your, your first two weeks like and how did you navigate that? Yeah, so my, my first two weeks were Christmas and New Year. So I joined on the 21st of December and um, – Probably by day two, I was thinking, shit, I should have waited till <laughs> after New Year. But, you know, I, I just thought I've joined. Let's see what we can do. And uh, went through some of the materials, I guess, provided in the the program, the, the videos you put up, um, some of the other uh, online resources, and joined a few Zoop, uh, groom, group Zoom meetings. And I just kind of tried to embrace it and shift shift my mindset um and you know i think one of the the quotes you use regularly is you know i can easily just drink soda water or you know whatever non-alcoholic beverage you like and that pro- like when i thought about it it probably wasn't enough for me so i just tried to think what can i enjoy um on christmas day and it was just some basic stuff it was like i love food so i'm going to enjoy the food um I'm going to try try and socialize alcohol free. So let's, you know, let's give that a go and see how it feels. And then just be willing to join in things like activities and, you know, Christmas Day people go to, the, you know, walk up to the park. And in the past I'd, you know, just say, oh, you guys go, I'll look after the house, you know, because all I want to do is sit there and, and drink but without the drinks like, okay let's go and it was nice you you go you hang out with your family and you know christmas day had you know it was just chatting with people and and same with new year's I, like i was away for that that week of new year's with another couple and yeah my friend was having a scotch or beer as we cooked the barbecue most nights and it was it was easy i'm not going to say i didn't think oh you know i wouldn't mind a scotch right now but it was probably good that i did all those things early on because i was so motivated and then you know you'd i'd wake up the next day and be able to think back and i didn't lose anything by not drinking i actually had a really good time um and i gained so i and i gained a positive experience um some i guess what would call evidence for myself that i can socialize without alcohol and now I'm waking up and I can do whatever the hell I want. So it was tricky, uh, well, but it was easy at the same time. This is all, obviously those little moments where you go, oof, oof, I wouldn't mind getting on that. But you kind of push it aside and it, it doesn't last that long. And, yeah, having that mindset definitely took it away from struggling through willpower. Mm, got it. So uh, you got you got to child coming in four weeks do you know if it's a boy or a girl are you allowed to share or not uh i would be but it's a, it's a total surprise it's something oh, yeah. i really wanted right. to enjoy together um and just find out when it happens well good luck with that it's amazing congratulations um thank you how do you feel now that you're going to show up as a father compared to what you may have worried about previously maybe when you were when you were drinking yeah, well, now I'm going to show up the way <clears throat> I wanted to. Um, 
you know, again, like I said, being able to make choices and be present. Um, now, I'm sure I would have been helpful um, even drinking alcohol, but I probably would have done things begrudgingly. You know, I'm tired. Oh, i got to do it because that's, you know, my job. Whereas now I look forward to helping my wife out. Um, and then, you know, as like with anything that she needs, like obviously after the birth, I visualize as our child gets older and they have needs, you know, wanting to go to the park, wanting my attention, that I can appreciate it for, for what it is and enjoy it. And, you know, even thinking even further down the track, which, you know, <laughs> so even thinking further down the track as they get to their teenage years to be they that they can look at me and just say, well, dad always has a good time when we're at birthdays and that, and he doesn't drink. So, <clears throat> yeah, that I can be someone that they aspire to be like. Um, you know, if they choose to try alcohol, that's, that's fine. See, everyone has to make their own choices and learn from things, but um, I'm just really, really grateful that I'll be <clears throat> at least providing the example that I hope they can follow. And what feedback have you received from maybe your wife? Or from someone else as to this new improved version of Tommy? Yeah, so from my wife, um, definitely, uh, definitely I'm just happier, um, calmer. Like in 94 days, I don't even think we've had like an argument. <laughs> it's like it's just that that patience to work through things, um, you know, and uh, what we say, I guess, respond rather than react and just kind of consider things properly. I've got the patience to do that. Um, more energetic, more willing to do things, whether it's around the house or do some spontaneous things on the weekend that I probably wouldn't have done before. And, yeah, I just got feedback. Like one of the ones was from my sister and her her boyfriend. Um, we'd, we'd gone to a wedding all together, a family wedding, and, Obviously, I didn't. I was alcohol free, and the week after, I saw them, and they're like, "You didn't, uh, you're not, you're still not drinking, are you? Like you had it. Look like you had a great time at the wedding. Like, you know, there's probably, yeah, you know, you're dancing, you're chatting. It's probably the best like we've seen you, and like you look great. They're like, you look like you lost weight. Yeah, you know, your face is fresh, and you know, there was no reason for them to say that. Like, I hadn't said I'd joined Project Ninety. I just said taking a break from alcohol at the moment, you know, had enough. And that was just unsolicited feedback. I was just popped over to see them and or was at my parents, sorry, and they just brought it up out of nowhere. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and like other mates have just said, mate, I'm proud of you. Like I'm really, really impressed with this no alcohol thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I, again, they – it's unsolicited. Like they just say it out of nowhere. Yeah. Do you feel like your perception of alcohol has shifted? And if so, how? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I think the reason it's shifted, I was actually thinking about this as I kind of celebrated my 90 days to myself the other, the other night. And I just... I think I enjoy being alcohol free so much that I can say I don't like alcohol. Like I feel so great now. Um, like I said, I've got a lot more trust in myself, um, a lot more, lot more pride and self esteem, and I have a great time. Um, and yeah, even sometimes now when I like hear of someone saying they had a big night and a hungover. I kind of feel a little bit sick in the stomach, like that thought of that feeling. And, you know, I haven't had to live through that for 94 days and it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Uh, beautiful to watch as well. Beautiful to see you, sh you share that. What's the plan now with your drinking? Um, so I don't plan on, on drinking now. Um, at, when I first joined, I did share with uh, Coach Kevin that <laughs> – I envisaged a life of uh, alcohol moderation um, and he that was very early on and he did encourage me to just park that thought. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I hear what you're saying, just put it to the side, which I did. 
And then as I've kind of gone through it, um, it's just not something I want to do right now. Um, Because when I think back, there's no there's no evidence to say I've ever been able to drink in moderation. (laughs) You know, it's there's no history of it. So am I going to create some new history there and like test it out when I don't need to? Um, Yeah, my history tells me that if I have one or two, I end up having ten or fifteen or whatever it is, Um, and yeah, just don't need it. Um, One of the things is I've found having zero is a lot easier for me than having one or two because if having one or two I've kicked off the process and then the rest of the night I'm depriving myself and it's just a nightmare like I don't have fun and now like without even having any I just can enjoy the night or day for what it is Mm. so if you're going to sum up you know what you've learned from going through this process about yourself what would those lessons be? Um, well, one, that I can socialise without alcohol. I can have a good time. Um, that I am a, I am a gentleman. Um, and one of the other things I learned is other people don't actually drink that much. <laughs> so I think along the way, um, yeah, there's a few times I'm packing up after a party and now that I'm alcohol free and yeah, there's bottles that haven't been opened that were previously opened because of myself. Um, or even we had people over the other week and the most anyone had was one beer and I'm, I'm offering because I'm trying to like let people live their life. I'm not trying to convince anyone to be alcohol free and everyone was just fine with water. Um, so I think, um, I think you've mentioned a few times, like people don't really care that you don't drink. And I think that's a fear that we have when we first start, like they don't care. Um, and one thing I learned about myself is probably that <clears throat> um, I was a bit of an idiot in the past um, and because I, I probably used to try and force people to drink because uh, in a way I guess I was bringing them down with me. You know, it's that kind of that that drinker's thing that's like, oh, come on, don't be a party pooper or you know, don't be a pussy. And in the end of the day, the, those people weren't party poopers. They're probably, they're probably having a better time than me. They are comfortable in their, in their own skin and they are having a great time and they were probably going to do great things the next day as well. Mm. So now that you've completed 90 days, what would you say to someone who might be listening right now or watching this who's considering doing it on their own? Um, yeah, what would you advise them to do to try and get power over their drinking from here? Yeah, so um, I'd always encourage people to give it a go on their own if that's <clears throat> if they think that it'll work um, and if they can do it. But if not, I definitely would encourage anyone to get involved in Project 90 or a, a group program because uh, I find all the components uh together that made it so easy for me so the the group zoom calls um the group marco polos which is um you know instant video communication with with the group and one-on-one coaching where you can really focus on um personalized coaching or things that you need you need help on and then obviously investing in yourself so paying to be part of the program obviously kept has a form of accountability on its own. And I don't think the investment wouldn't have been would have been enough without the coaching. And I don't think the coaching wouldn't would have been enough without the investment. And yeah, definitely don't underestimate the importance of the group because um in terms of what worked for me, it would have been probably the Marco Polo group, which at the start I would have thought was just a nice add-on. Mm. Then the group Zoom calls and then the one-on-one chats. Where it's quite funny because at the start when I've paid for the program, I'm thinking I need one-on-one coaching every day. <laughs> you know, that, that's what's going to get me there. But it, it wasn't. It's um, working with others that are <clears throat> you know, going through the same thing. You know, none, I think not, like you've said, James, we're not alcoholics. We're not like broken. We're just wanting to change our relationship with alcohol. And, yeah, doing that with others and, you know, working through what's, 
what what's working or not working for me and hearing from others it, um, was highly beneficial and really, really um, rewarding in the end. Awesome. Well, Tommy, congratulations again, mate. Well done on uh, 94 days, alcohol-free so far. Good luck uh, with your expected you. fatherhood just four weeks away. And, uh, yeah, really terrific work, mate. I'd, uh, I acknowledge you for your commitment to yourself and to your wife and to your family and to your uh, future child and uh, wishing you continue, continued success and health in the future, mate. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.